Can I just say this is probably one of the best examples of nepotism used in film or television the, that I've seen in a long, long time. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Monarch. Now you might be wondering, why did I review this? I've been doing a lot of photo editing in the last little while, and so I've got back into watching some shows that I hadn't got to see yet, and Monarch was one that I was interested in because I had some friends who worked on it, and it also had two people who worked on it, one of them being Matt Fraction, which is a big comic book writer. It seemed like all of the criticism that all of the MonsterVerse movies have faced in terms of give us a character that we care about because the last time that happened was Brian Cranston all the way back in Godzilla. They took that to heart. Maybe a little bit too much. And this one was all based on these two different kids, one from America, another from Japan, trying to find their father, who turns out to have had uh, secret hidden relationships with each. All of it also tied back into his research of Monarch, everything related with Godzilla and the monsters and everything else that was happening around the Earth. And if I'm correct, this took place after the second Godzilla movie. There were two narratives. There was one where young Kurt Russell, or his son, Wyatt, is helping build Monarch back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, working with these two other individuals, one a scientist, another a documentary filmmaker figure out what was going on with Godzilla and all of the theories of the hollow earth and all of that there was some very interesting narrative aspects into that and I was always interested when it was in the past however they are not the main narrative the main narrative is these three kids the estranged son and daughter of missing man and their friend and they're almost insufferable so whiny they're so boring dragging the plot for the sake of drama and the only good grace you have with them is Kurt Russell who appears he's kind of driving the narrative forward but when it is solely these kids you are pulled out they kind of just want to keep focusing on them it's almost like the Quan situation with the Halo show that character that no one fucking cares about they have conveniently not shown in any promotional material for season two that was what it was like watching monarch every time these kids came on screen you just didn't give a shit you cared more about the weird monarch following guy who kind of went back and forth between being an aide and being a adversary between their own personal kind of misconceptions their own drama about their relationships with their father which by the way they don't really explain why he had to like this was the main mystery and then they're like you know what when they find out what it is it's not gonna be as interesting so let's let's take that away and put another mystery in its place when you eventually found out what caused it all you're like that's it i kind of went back and forth between being very interested in it to being very bored with it to being very intrigued with what was going on to not giving a single fucking shit about what was happening with the characters now there were some people who were also upset that godzilla was not in this all the time that wasn't the point of the show sure they kept showing in the promotional material so i can understand some misconception on that the whole part about it was monarch's uh, development and then also the relation to the hollow earth and they kind of gave a little bit more of a narrative spin on that a little bit more of a weight on it however this show breaks the logic of the monster verse to a pretty silly degree not only is the continuity between monarch and godzilla versus king kong completely broken by this show. The show itself even breaks its own logic in the last episode. For those of you who know what I'm talking about, you know, but for those who don't and don't care about spoilers, I'll say it at the end after I give the number review. It was an okay production. I was happy that I got to see some of my friends work. I know some people who worked on this show. Good for you guys, uh, especially the special effects guys. You did really good with the smoke stuff in certain environments and you know what I'm talking about. I thought that was really well done. From what I've also heard, apparently script changes were happening almost daily and you can see that with how the narrative plays out. It's very kind of like but also just somehow so boring. In the end, I'm going to give Monarch a 3 out of 7. I enjoyed the past, but I did not enjoy the present story, even with Kurt Russell there. Purely if you're interested in the MonsterVerse stuff, not just Godzilla, not just Kong, like the whole thing, you'll be interested in that. 
but you have to be very, very interested to want to watch this. I only watched it because I was working while watching it, so. And then I was for the spoiler bit. As I said, if you guys don't care about spoilers, that's awesome. But if you do, just click off the video now. Thank you for watching. So we've established that going into the hollow earth is a time travel. Like it basically is like going to the water planet in interstellar time slows down there, but in reality it passes by incredibly fast on the outside world. That did not happen whatsoever in King Kong versus Godzilla. Not in the fucking slightest. On the same token, Kurt Russell or Wyatt Russell gets sucked out, gets pulled into the 70s or was it the 80s? Yeah, it was 82. How come he doesn't get sucked out again when Godzilla is there fighting the giant bat thing and the kids and the wife, which I actually did like that. I thought that was a little bit of a cheap plot twist with the mom being alive after all this time, considering like how the fuck did you survive being swarmed by termites? Whichever, that was very much a comic book move. Wyatt got sucked out like without the ship or anything and that Kurt Russell did not. Apparently season two is going to happen and it's not going to happen in Vancouver. They're moving it to Toronto, which boo. Maybe they're going to bring Kurt back there. A lot of this also, as it all comes to be, it ends, if I'm correct, just before Godzilla vs. King Kong. So the show is almost in kind of entirely pointless. You don't need to have watched any of this for any. All you got was backstory on who John Goodman's character was before King Kong uh, Skull Island. That's it. So I don't think they're going to incorporate this shit in the Godzilla and King Kong next movie. I don't think they're going to. I, I don't think they give a shit to. <laughs> Anyways, that's all for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested more, subscribe. Until then, see you guys next time.